In April 2023, I noticed a fly on my kitchen window that had something dangling from its rear end. I assumed it was a clump of spider web. I decided to spray him with some salty water to see if that would be a non-toxic way to kill flies. I use a spray bottle of salt water to put small amounts of salt on such foods as popcorn, avocado slices, and mushrooms. The salt water caused his wings to become so wet that he fell down near the kitchen sink and climbed onto a green scouring pad, but it did not seem to kill him, and I wasn't in the mood to do it, so I just left him there. The next morning, I noticed that he was still on the scouring pad, so I assumed he was dead. Later that day, I decided to look more closely to see what was dangling from his body. To my surprise, I discovered there was a creature that looked like a scorpion next to him, and another one was clinging to his leg. Even more amazing, one of those creatures was alive. I put some fresh water on him to wash away the salt, and that caused him to become even more active. I decided to get a photo of him and use the Google image search function to find out what he was. So I carefully poked him to get him to let go of the fly and pushed him onto a piece of paper. He was barely alive, which made it easy to get a photo of him. I discovered that he is a pseudoscorpion. The Wikipedia entry even has a photo of a fly with a pseudoscorpion attached to its leg, just like what I found in my kitchen. I put him in a plastic container so that I could get a better look at him. Some species have two eyes, some have four, but some don't have any eyes. I could not get a good view of his face because he was so tiny, but maybe those two dots on his face are eyes. There are some photos of pseudoscorpions on the internet that resemble the variety I found, but they don't have good views of its face either. Someone needs to put one of these creatures under a powerful microscope. I assumed that he would soon die, but I decided to feed him. They eat larvae, book lice, ants, mites, and small flies, but I don't have any of those creatures, so I gave him some aphids. I thought it would be easy for him to capture such delicate creatures. Occasionally, it touched one of the aphids, but it didn't show any interest in trying to grab them or chase after them or eat them. Sometimes it looked like it was going to attack an aphid, but it never did. It just wandered around slowly and tried to avoid the aphids. So I found this tiny, ugly fly in my house and put it into the container. It was about the size of an aphid, but the pseudoscorpion didn't show any interest in that creature either. It spent most of its time just sitting on the bottom of the container, not doing much of anything, but occasionally cleaning its pincers. Some are supposed to have neurotoxic venom in their pincers, but I don't know if this one has it. I decided to give it a more natural environment. I put it into a container with some crushed grains that I swept up from the garage where I grind grain for bread because that grain quickly attracts tiny bugs. I also added some bits of fruit and some partially rotten leaves from my yard. It was a tiny terrarium. A week later, I noticed lots of little bugs living in it, and some of the bugs had laid lots of eggs. Some bugs had also created silky material that resembled spider webs. The container was also filling up with red-eyed fruit flies. There were also lots of nearly transparent worm-like creatures, which I assume are nematodes. 
To my surprise, the pseudoscorpion was alive and looked very healthy, so it must have been eating some of those bugs or their eggs. There were also lots of tiny mites eating the crushed grains. In case the pseudoscorpion needed some moisture, I occasionally gave it a mist of water. Nearly a month later, the pseudoscorpion was still alive and healthy. Then I decided to film how I give him a mist of water. Incidentally, like so many products today, that plastic spray bottle broke after about a year. Unfortunately, the next day I couldn't find the pseudoscorpion, so I suppose he crawled out of the container or was knocked out while I was filming the misting. I didn't think I would care about an insect, but after taking care of him for many weeks, I had become attached to the little guy, so it was a bit sad to discover that he was gone. Anyway, it made me wonder, how could a fly carry two pseudoscorpions when they are so large compared to the fly? How much weight can a fly carry? Of course, that question doesn't have an answer because flies and pseudoscorpions are different sizes. But some internet sites claim that flies can carry about 50% of their body weight. 